Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today, we are going to go over how to use the NVIDIA SDK Manager. For this demo, we are setting up a Jetson Xavier NX Dev Kit to native boot from a SSD. The NVIDIA Jetson SDK Manager is a solution for installing the Jetson development environment. The SDK Manager is flexible, helping to flash and install NVIDIA SDKs on a Jetson development kit or module. The SDK Manager can also configure a x86 host machine for developing Jetson applications using cross-compilation. Let's install the SDK Manager. The first step is to go to the NVIDIA SDK Manager webpage. From there, you will download the installation package. Before we do that, let's look at the host system requirements. You will need to install the SDK Manager on a x86 Linux machine. Several Linux distributions are supported, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Rocky Linux, Red Hat, and Debian. You will need 8 gigabytes of RAM, an internet connection, and free storage space. It's usually between 32 to 64 gigabytes of drive space for each Jetpack version you install. Let's scroll back up here and we click on the .deb file. To download the installer, you will need to sign into your NVIDIA developer account. If you do not have one, you can create one for free. Once you're logged in, you can begin downloading. Let's download the file. Now we will open up the download folder. We're on Ubuntu here. We can double click the .deb file to bring up the software installer. You could also use dpackage from the command line. And then we click install. Password. Good to go, G. Let's close everything up. Now, let's launch SDK Manager. The first time you run it, you will be asked for your NVIDIA developer credentials. I'll conveniently skip that part. The SDK Manager interface is a little bit quirky. In the upper right-hand corner, this little kebab menu is the main menu. Here's where you can change some of the default settings, proxy settings, concurrent downloads, things like that. If you have trouble with your installations, you can export the debug logs. And there are a couple of other bookkeeping items. You can also access the user guide from this menu. This is a pretty comprehensive program it's worth reading through the manual to understand its true power. There's a section about installing Jetson software. You can refer to this in case you run into any problems. There's a section about using SDK Manager through the command line interface. It gives you a lot of the options and flags and so forth. Let's switch back over to the program. The meatball menu on the target hardware section brings up the different Jetson models. Hovering over one of the icons brings up a larger image. It makes it a little bit easier to identify the Jetson you're using. If your Jetson is powered on and connected to the host, then SDK Manager will also select which Jetson you are using. For the demonstration, we are using a Jetson Xavier NX. Let's select that. I'm not going to be cross-compiling on the host, so I will turn the host machine option off. Clicking the meatball menu in the target operating system section, brings up the different versions of Jetpack, which are available to install. The default is the latest version for the target hardware. In this case, Jetpack 5.1. As a reminder, this process is going to erase everything on your Jetson. Make sure it's something you want to do and that you have adequate backups. If you want to install DeepStream, enable it here. I'm not going to use it for my application right now. I'm going to turn it off. Now we continue to step two. Here we determine which Jetson software we are going to install. There's Jetson Linux itself, and then all the Jetson runtime components. You can also install the Jetson SDK components, which are used for development. Pick and choose as needed. You should know that you can install the Jetson runtime components and Jetson SDK components separately from Jetson Linux. Also, the Jetson Runtime and SDK components can be installed directly from the internet on the Jetson itself. However, you must flash Jetson Linux from a host computer. At the bottom of the page, you can set the download folder 
in the target hardware image folder. This allows you to organize everything as you see fit. Now click I accept the license agreements. I accept my fate. Continue to the next step. The folders don't exist. Now let's create them. We'll click continue again. Password. And we're off to the races. We'll begin downloading things now. We can click the terminal tab up here. That gives us a command line on the install progress. After downloading the Jetson Linux image and the SDK components, we are ready to flash. There are two ways to set up your Jetson for flashing. The first method is called automatic setup. If your Jetson has already been flashed and is running, you can use this method. The Jetson model will automatically be detected when the Jetson is running and connected to the host using a USB cable. The USB cable must be data enabled. Let's connect the Jetson to the host. You can see that the SDK manager located the Jetson Xavier NX developer kit. The SDK manager is going to connect to the Jetson over the USB cable. It will then log into the Jetson and reboot it into force recovery mode. In order to log in, it will need to know the username and password. We can configure the Jetson either from the host here or the first time that we boot up the Jetson. The storage device indicates where the root FS is going to be installed. The model of Jetson determines this capability. On this Xavier NX, I will be booting from a SSD connected via MVME. We call this native boot. Click flash and the flashing begins. The second way to flash the Jetson is called manual setup. Let's select manual setup. We're on a Jetson Xavier NX developer kit. After making our selection, instructions for how to put the dev kit into recovery mode appear. I'm going to boot from SSD. It is connected via MVME. Let's configure the Jetson the first time it boots up. We do that by setting the OEM configuration to runtime. Now let's set the Jetson into force recovery mode. The procedure is a little bit different between Jetson models. To do that, we need to jump our pins 9 and 10 here on the J50 header located directly under the Jetson module. You can use a standard jumper to connect the two pins. A pair of tweezers would be useful. I have found that a DuPont female to female breadboard jumper wire is easier to use. Now we connect pins 9 and 10 together. The micro USB end of a USB cable is plugged into the Jetson. We now plug in the other end to our host laptop. Now we power on the Jetson. And we see our little green light. Over on the host, we can see that the Jetson has been detected. It's a developer kit. Let's click that. Now we remove the jumper wires. One of the quirks of the SDK manager is that after the Jetson is detected, the setup mode changes back to automatic. Let's change it to manual again. Now we are ready to start flashing. After Jetson Linux is installed, the Jetson will boot. Now we are ready to install Jetpack libraries and SDK. If you select runtime for OEM configuration, you will need to configure the Jetson before proceeding. Let's hop over to the Jetson. Yeah, yeah, accept the license. I accept my fate. English, please. Where am I? Let's set up the names. Password. Your password is weak. Let's go with the default size. The app partition on this 128 gigabyte drive is around 120 gigabytes. 
I'm going to install Chromium. This takes a few minutes. The Jetson configures itself and then reboots. Let's go back over to the host machine. Let me set the username and password that I used on the Jetson. I'm going to use an Ethernet connection. You can use the USB one if you want, but Ethernet is a little bit faster. The Jetson needs to be on the same network as the host machine for this to work, of course. Let's set the IP address. You may need to look on the Jetson port's IP address. Then we click Install, and we're off to the races. Installation complete. Let's switch back over to the Jetson. Let's wander over to the home directory and then sudo apt update. We are working towards installing the JTOP utility. Let's install pip for Python 3. Now we install the Jetson stats package. and reboot. Let's run JTOP. We can see we are running Jetpack 5.1, L4T 35.2.1. We switch over to the info screen and we can see the Jetpack libraries that were installed and their version numbers. When we open up the disks application, we can see the NVMe SSD device that we are booting from. We can see that the drive has a large number of partitions on it. Each one of the partitions has a different role to play in the low-level system architecture. The last partition here is the app partition. It's where our rootfs lives. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Mm -hmm.